What's up? You found your way back to the worm again. And uh, it's time to get back to this cabin here. Got the front wall up and the other walls are gonna go really fast. They're pretty straightforward. Just uh, two of the three walls here are gonna have windows. Be So we got a window there, door there in the front. It's gonna be a window on this side, a long skinny one. Another small one over there somewhere and then the back wall will be nothing. Just be space for shelves and storage and stuff. And I've got enough uh, logs milled up for this, but they're, most of what I have right now are longer ones, or 12 footers. And the rafters are gonna have to be a lot longer than the wall studs, you know, going this way, and then another one across the middle. So I kinda wanna save the 12 footers for that if I can, not cut a bunch of 12 footers into eight footers and waste a bunch. I mean, you know, the short pieces cut off the end do get used eventually, but, I think I'm gonna head down to the uh, where I cut those two big uh, pine trees, white pine trees, and where all this came from. I think I only went through, so far I only went through one log or one and a half logs. So I'm calling that a log basically. I mean that has another couple slabs that are missing, but I had one eight foot log here milled up and then that's like a seven foot log. I used half of that. So the lumber is stretching pretty good. I've got, uh, what do we have? Two, two and a half, 12 foot, three logs slabbed up. And then this weird crooked one I just milled up because it was there. I don't really know what I'll do with it. I'll leave that for now. I'm not really sure. Uh, but what I have down there that I left, I think I have a couple of really nice straight fir poles, but I do have, I think, a 16 foot pine pole that was the top of one of these really big trees that has a bunch of knots in it. And I'm thinking I better use the knotty stuff for the walls instead of the roof. You don't want, you know, it on the roof where you can crack and, uh, you know, the roof to cave in. So I'm gonna grab the mill and stuff, throw it in the trailer here, and we'll go down, take a look, maybe mill that up, and then uh, put a couple more walls together. This is mostly the one I had in mind. A lot of knots, but I think I'll get a couple logs out of there. Be a pain to mill, especially this end, that many knots and that big a log, but we'll get through it. And then I also have these logs over here. Uh, I think that's pine. That's shorter than eight feet, but we'll mill that up, use it for something. That was maybe a little bit too small, a little bit too small to mill. This one's really nice. Perfectly straight 12 footer. All right, let's see what we can get out of it. Then the rest of it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just gonna get what I'm gonna get. Be nice if I got another eight footer. Totally get another eight footer. That's great. Let's chop this sucker up. These big logs are kind of hard to flip around if you can't pick them up yourself. So I just had to put it on here, whichever way it rolled up and it's the uh, bend in the log is down. So the danger in this is not putting the plates low enough. If they're too high, you put them where you normally do, you cut through and you pop right out in the middle of the log there. You kind of screw up the whole thing. So hopefully this will work. Who parked this four wheeler so close? Trying to get me smacked on the funny bone. Good 
definitely got some knots but uh, I think it's still gonna hold up a cabin wall just fine dang that looks great inside wow <laughs> Well, that came out sweet. I'm working on a theory here. Something I've noticed is, assuming you have the same size log, say you have a 12-inch log, but it's from the top of the tree, or a 12-inch log from the bottom of the tree, it's a lot easier to mill the log from the top of the tree than the bottom. I don't really know why that is. Maybe it's like a higher percentage of sapwood at the top of the tree, or something about the stress of the tree, like the oldest wood's at the bottom. Something about it being older. I don't know, because a log this size from the bottom of one of these trees was like almost unmillable and this just flew through it. I did that whole thing with one chain, didn't even have to switch it out. And that's got to be at least two, four, six, eight, ten, at least a dozen two by fours, if not more. All right, let's roll this other one down here. Oh, I still got to cut it too. Oh, eight. <laughs> I just saved your legs, you owe me big time, sucker. tripods in the way on one end and the four-wheelers on the other end. I'm <laughs> just all hemmed in. That's the outside cut outside of the log and it's, I mean, again, it's got knots but I think it's gonna work great. So even if you haven't uh, milled with a chainsaw before, you've seen a lot of it on this channel. This is a, what is it, 10, 10 or 12 inch log. This would be the very top one, the highest up on the tree that I'm gonna mill. And watch how fast the chainsaw goes through it. I mean, it's still chainsaw milling. It's not like you just literally jog through, but it's something about high up on the tree. It just mills like butter. <laughs> I was just uh, packing up the trailer to take all the lumber and all my tools back up to camp and I thought I'd mill this one uh, fur log. I've never come across lumber this clear. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's almost like it was made in a laboratory or something. No knots, no nothing. Just like perfectly smooth, perfectly clear. It mills beautifully. Well, I guess there's some really tiny knots in there, but wouldn't mind finding another two, three thousand of those logs. Not very big. None of them out here are that big and they all seem to be dying, but the few that are newly dead and, you know, at least six, eight inches around, man, I could use a lot. I forgot about this thing. Whew. My monster slingshot. I came down here the other day and was like, holy crap, I could have used that. I should have used this for one of the other feet on the cabin foundation. You know, I got that one that's split in two, but a big one like this would have been cool. And then I thought, what if for my monster desk, I attach it firmly to the wall and then just have one foot under the whole thing, which would be this. You probably cut it off like here or something, set the entire desk on it, put giant lag bolts in it so it'd be sturdy. I think that'd be sweet. I'm gonna take it up because if I leave it here, I'll forget about it. I mean, I'm gonna take it up if I can figure out how to get it on there.
All right, strap it on like that. We're good. All right, got them all up here. Check that out. One, two, three whole nice logs, and then that uh, fir tree. And I think I'm gonna mill this guy, or uh, what do you call this? Lumberize, I'm gonna lumberize this wood. Uh, I think I'm gonna start the generator and use the uh, circular saw again. It's not super fast, but you know, it saves a lot of batteries and you end up with really, really nice lumber. Ooh, man, those deer flies are so nasty. I've been talking about them for what, like a couple months now and just how much I hate them. They're really fast, they're hard to catch. I've been trying to catch one for my collection so I could look at it under the microscope and see like what kind of mouth they have that can actually just draw blood in like a half a second. But I smacked one, didn't squish it, so I saved it and put it under the microscope. Check this out, look at its eyes. Is that crazy or what? And look, the head is like barely attached. Maybe that's just a fly thing. Maybe they're all like that. My guess is it makes it so they can rotate their head all the way around. But man, those eyes are freaky, aren't they? <laughs> Bugs are bizarre. Very bizarre. turn something like that into two by fours. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> at least a wall or two of uh, eight footers uh, from yesterday's milling plus I don't know I don't know now they're all mixed up it was definitely worth milling those knotty logs though because these these look great I mean they just look like normal two by fours so I guess that's great I'm not really sure if it's uh better to build two opposite walls first and then do the other two or to go around or whatever I think I hope I'll be able to lift up this back wall. Maybe I'll do the back wall now and then the side walls. You know, if you build two side walls in between the front and the back, you won't be able to stand them up because they're kind of like hemmed in, but I'm not gonna be able to lift those side, side walls by myself anyway. So probably have to do those in pieces. So yeah, let's do this back wall. This back walls, what? I just need two corners and a bunch of studs, top and bottom plate, that's it. No windows in the back. almost out of the right kind of nails. We're gonna have to go dig up something, some replacements. <clears throat> yep. Chainsaw Millen's just a tiny bit wonky. Not that that's a bad thing, That's I think that's a good thing. All 
now. Got some 16 penny spiral siding nails, three and a half inch. That'll do. I think the only difference is the head smaller, which is not great, but whatever. We got a mix of nails here. Well, you want to keep the lumber guessing. I'm learning a lot here, a lot about uh, building and framing. I like learning like this. I mean, I guess I could take a class or look this stuff up, but it's, you know, you could put this whole place together in uh, a few days if you just have the lumber sitting here and it takes no time to like pull a corner out, and turn it around or whatever. But there are a few things I see that I did wrong. Some of them I turned them around and the others I just figured out how I'm gonna work around it. I'm assuming that Either you guys know how to frame or you don't know how to frame and you don't care. <laughs> so either way, you're probably not interested in this, but I'll keep it brief. This is what I found. Is that because this is a one and a half inch side. This is a one inch side. So if you're doing one inch wall boards inside, you have to put this one on first. So you still have an area to nail this one to going this way. If you do it the other way around, if you put a one inch board here and then you go to put it on here, you miss the inside. So, you do want this corner a mirror of that corner, which I did not do. I actually didn't do it because my top plate wasn't long enough to span all the way over, so I turned it around. But it's easy enough to just remember that and uh, make it work when I put the wall boards on the inside. I'll just have to start on one corner and then kind of back up to another wall, butt them in anyway. Yeah, so this is not symmetrical. A corner is not symmetrical. One side is a half inch longer than the other side, just the way it's put together. So this will work great when I put the bottom plate in here. If this was turned around the other way, it looks like you'd only be left with, this would only be sticking out a half inch and that wouldn't be ideal. So anyway, that's to say, this is a fun way to learn and I'm glad to learn it. Because if I do this again, when I do this again, uh, hopefully I'll remember that stuff. It's also just out here by myself. Nobody's waiting on me or anything, so if I gotta take stuff apart and move it around, it's not really a big problem. Happy to do it. You know, learning as you work and do this stuff by yourself is just like, I think for me, it sticks in my brain better if I've done it, kind of made a mistake and had to fix it, than if somebody just told me and I went to do it again in a year, I probably wouldn't remember these things. You know what else is grand is this freaking weather. I think I'm just going to keep repeating this in uh, every video until maybe until the snow flies, but it's a high of 70 today. Pretty calm, a little bit of a breeze, and I just happen to be working in the shade. How amazing, how fantastic. It's a big change, man. I just I was talking to Tito the other day and just saying, you know, I think I hate summer. I love the fall, I love the winter, love the spring, middle of summer. It's just not for me, which is funny because the last place I lived was uh, Southern California where it's always summer. So <laughs> I don't know, things change. Maybe I'm getting old. Maybe my blood's coagulating or something. Is that the thing that happens? It probably is. All right, I think this one's gonna be lighter. Let's hope. It's still really heavy. Holy crap.
I mean, it's funny when I uh, mill up a log and put it on the trailer. You know, you just put it on piece by piece onto the trailer and you drive away and the four-wheeler spins its tires and you wonder what the deal is. You don't think of like the weight. This is probably one whole eight and a half foot log that's uh, like 15 inch diameter. That is a heavy sucker. It's not until you pick it all up together that you realize what the weight is. Oh, somebody forgot the uh, level. What a dope. Hey, you gotta give it command that's. Hey, be nice. Don't crap on the carpet. It's too bad that uh, that learning like this isn't encouraged. I mean, I guess there's good reason that people don't learn how to build just by building. Although, I don't know, you do a shed or <laughs> I'm gonna say a kid's playhouse. I guess there are reasons not to just wing it on a playhouse. Yeah, whatever. Kids are resilient. They bounce. I bounced a lot when I was a kid. But it seems like people in general are hesitant to learn something by just figuring it out on their own. Whether it's you know, building sheds or fixing cars or whatever. I think that keeps people from getting into fun stuff. You know, it's like, oh, I don't have anybody to teach me how to do that. I guess I can't do it. I think the figuring out part is the good stuff. Once you know how to do it, then, I mean, what's the point? This is what I was talking about with the corners. See, as I slide this one in, if I was actually nailing it from the bottom, which I can't because it's already attached, but if the corner was turned around, this would be pulled out maybe to here. Not a big deal right now on the bottom. I mean, it's not a big deal anyway, but uh, on the top, when I put the top plate on that corner, it'll be just like that. It won't overlap quite as far, so you have less space to, you know, get nails in there. Oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta put a window on this side. I kinda want my desk on this side, in which case I want the big window. Although Tito's point of getting southern sun in the winter is well taken. Ah, uh, eh, screw the sun. I'm gonna put it on this side. It's 60 by 36. I'm wondering if there's a good reason to keep these 16 on center all the way across the wall, like not to re-space them so you get, uh, what, 14 and a half inch spans between two studs. Like I did over here, space that bigger so that this ended up, you know, 14 and a half, 14 and a half, whatever. The only thing I can think of is, like when you buy a sheet of drywall, it's four feet by eight feet, so you need it to fall right on the studs or you end up cutting a piece off all the time. But in my case, the siding and the interior walls are all just random sizes. It doesn't really make any difference, the spacing of the 2x4s. But if they are spaced 16, then I get more uh, full, full pieces of insulation in there. Well, it's not going to be the end of the world if I try it my way and it doesn't work out. I think I'm going to go 16 on center until I get to the edge of the window, frame the window out, and then wherever the last 2x4 falls, then just go to 16 again after that. You know, like if these were 16, 16, 16, so you get this, you frame the window. The window's not exactly uh, the right size to fit in between studs and then pick up 16 on center again there. I know that's not the way it's normally done, but I'm gonna try it. Let's see how it works. By the way, when this stuff doesn't work out right, I'll try to remember like down the road, I don't know when I'm finishing this or whatever, and I come across the, the issues I've made for myself, I'll try to put them in the videos. It's kind of annoying that everything online, social media, everybody's like public presence online is always like, oh, look at this great stuff that happened to me. Look at this fantastic sushi. And you never get like the downside, like I'm depressed today or my cat crapped on the carpet again. <laughs> my kid's a real asshole. You know, they just don't put that stuff on there. So I'm gonna try to keep that stuff in here. I think it's good uh, not candy coat and everything. 
and showing your screw ups. I got a lot of them. So where do we put the window? Right in the middle of the wall, I guess. Well, let's just go one, two, let's go three studs in. So it'll be there, 60 inches. Or should I move it back a little bit? I gotta admit, I'm getting a little tired of climbing up here. Should probably take a minute and build some steps, but yeah, I don't want to. All right, I don't know what the chances are actually to leave this out right first time well I know the chances are zero the first time because I had to redo it but let's see if it see if it works I think I got a good chunk of lumber for that header it's gonna be five feet three inches by 12 inches if it's 12 inches tall, then it'll come out at the same height as the first window in the front wall there. Yeah, these would work. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. This log was crooked and I just milled it anyway. And I was thinking I was going to make it like a, put a couple, two, three boards right next to each other and make it like this weird S-shaped uh, table thing. But now that I've got that amazing cedar for uh, my desk and the tables, I mean, these are weird to mill into two by fours. You just end up having to cut it in half and get short board so I think I pull one out of the middle and make a five foot header out of it. Is it twelve? Well perfect. I think we'll just barely get twelve inches out of it. The downside to doing it this way is then when you put the siding or the wall boards on, there's nothing to attach them to. So I'll just have to put some little strips in here to hold it out or just make the top two boards long enough they span over that. Well, that's not the biggest window ever. Well, biggest I got. All right, it's not the whole wall, but hopefully I can still pick it up. Looks about the size of the other one, so I might might crap my pants, but let's give it a go. If you're used to working with normal store-bought lumber, this probably doesn't look that heavy, but I bet it weighs I bet it weighs twice as much since all the wood's green. This one's not as bad as the first one. Oh, I could have slid it over a little more first. I also could have cut that tree out of the way. <laughs>
Check this place out. You can almost feel it. It looks so comfy and cozy and can you... Oh... I was just gonna say, can you feel the warmth of the stove? That's one thing I forgot to... Uh... <laughs> forgot to figure in. I know where the desk and the door and the windows and the bunk are going. I forgot it needs a stove in here. Well, it's not going to make any difference now. Probably just stick it in some corner or something. I guess I gotta, well, get this wall on here. Then have to figure out the roof. I have no idea how I'm going to do the roof. And before I finish the roof, I'll have to figure out where the stove's going. I left this one tree here just for no real reason other than it looked a little bit healthy on top. I thought it might come back after it had some light, but just pounded on it and it's hollow. So I have to push that thing over. You'd probably be surprised to learn that it's easier to cut the trees before you put the building here. Yeah, I don't know, figure out some way to get it over. I don't think, my guess is I'm not gonna have enough lumber for this thing. I definitely have enough to finish the wall. This wall, I'm gonna have to go cut some more right now. I've only got, Three more eight footers here. That one's short. Then I got a bunch of not quite eight footers. Oh, maybe that's eight foot. Oh, yeah, there's four more eight footers right there. That's great. So we've got seven. Let's see, how many do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like a dozen or something. Oh, no, that wall's getting, uh, getting a window too so I can use the short ones there well let's just go for it put this thing together and worst case is I'll need to rip up maybe one more board oh I don't have I need a top and bottom plate too you know I might have left some long ones over here last night before I called it a day I ripped up a couple extra boards that were just sitting in the way yeah my pile is definitely shrinking here yeah those are not eight footers these, man, I really wanted to save that log and a half there because I'll need those for the rafters. I hate to have to find more rafter logs. Well, I don't really know, but off the top of my head, I mean, I don't think it matters if the top and bottom plate are several pieces. I mean, that last wall I framed was two pieces for the top plate, two for the bottom plate. You end up doubling the top anyway, just overlap the, where the cuts are. So maybe I do those out of shorter pieces. I think I'll do that. Let's try putting this together out of short stuff. Let's see here. The remaining window is 42 and a half by 40 and a half. So not a lot bigger than that front window. I guess we'll just try to stick it in the middle of the wall here. Juggle a couple of these pieces and see if we can somehow get one of these to fall right in the middle. That looks too long. That'll work. So the center of the wall is here. I'd at least like to frame the window all in one piece so when I stand it up, I don't have like half a window frame. You know, like if I was going to put three pieces for a bottom plate over there, I wouldn't want it to come like in the middle of the window and then not be able to tip the whole thing up. So I'll do a short one here, long one here, and then just a little chunk there. I think that'll work fine. we'll use this scrap for the other header just get out of it when we can it's like it'll be less than 12 inches like the other ones maybe 10 or something close enough
How crazy is it that a battery powered Ryobi circular saw will rip inch and a half wet pine? It's nuts. Tools these days are great. Makes you wonder how, how they're gonna Im improve battery powered tools in the future. I mean, I guess they just keep getting a little more powerful or something. Or if they had a little built-in nuclear uh, power generator so you didn't have to have to recharge the batteries, that would be nice. I suppose eventually the batteries, you only charge them, what, once every year or two? I just uh, got it all nailed together and I think I might have measured something wrong, but instead of re-measure it, I'm just going to tip it up there and see if it fits. They're getting lighter. I wonder if it's because the lumber is drying out just a tiny bit. Nope. I did it right. It fits. <laughs> uh, luckiest guy in the world. studs. Uh, last eight footer. Don't you worry, I'll run out and make some more. You just stay right there. That's it. Well, this place looks great. It's nice you get a feel for the space now and the windows and everything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to make some steps pretty soon. I'm gonna, the one thing that's gonna kill me doing this is, I, I mean, I'm gonna end up breaking my ankle hopping down onto like a wobbly stump every time. But I hate making steps, it's so boring. It's like all that work to cut the trees and make the lumber and then you just make like, I don't know. It's for the birds, not, not for me. I guess I will, uh, use the little bit of scrap lumber I have left to go back around double the top plate because there were a lot of uh, you know butt joints that need to be I mean you do two top plates anyway I'm not going to use up any long lumber because I'm going to need everything that's left over there for you know the roof that'll be the next thing I'll just put these uh, top plates on and then have to figure out how to build the roof what I've been doing for pretty much all my builds so far is you need a roof like this in order to save lumber to not have to tie the walls together 
and a bunch of other stuff. I've been putting a post going up here and then set a huge fat ridge board on there that all the rafters lean up against. And in my brain, the weight of the roof pushing down actually gets transferred right down through the wall and I'd put like a double or triple stud there. And down here it would be right on top of a big fat support, floor support. I think, I actually think this stud is pretty close to the middle. I don't know. I don't know if I'll do the same thing or if I'm gonna make like trusses, like put these whole triangles together and then set them on here one at a time. I guess I could uh, lay them out on the floor here and build them on the floor and just set them up there. You know what, maybe I will do that. Maybe I'll make trusses because this, unlike everything else I've built, is gonna have that ceiling in it. So I do need the horizontal boards up there to attach the ceiling boards to. I don't think in the next week I'm gonna have to mill anymore, but I will be pretty surprised if that lumber pile holds out all the way through the whole roof. I mean, I definitely will have to do a lot more milling, probably of Aspen for the roof boards, but I mean, that's a couple of weeks away. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me through figuring this out. Come back next week if you feel like it. If not, then don't do it. See ya.